Hello, this is Emmanuel Patrick, and I'm going to introduce to you what we have been doing on the Kanda Weather Balloon Project. So, this is the prototype one. On the prototype one, we have the Katina 4610 board, um, which has the uh, PME 280 sensor pre installed in it. And what you see in front here, like a, which looks like a wire, is the, the antenna for sending and receiving packets. And this port over here is a JST 2.0 port for connecting to a 3.7 volt depot battery. Yes, this Casina 460 board has BME 280 sensors pre-installed in it. And the fiber optic antenna is also efficient but not very efficient like the one we have on our prototype 2.0 this is the payload a 3d printed box that we use to put the payload and you know what is attached to the balloon makes the payload so this is the 3d printed box and the casino board itself inside which we use to attach to our balloon to act as our payload so this is how I cover it. This one is pretty designed. It was well designed by Nicolas Lopez, a team member. So that is it. And that's how it looks when it's going to be attached through a ribbon to a balloon. So this is our balloon. It's 30 grams balloon. And it can fill to a very great size with helium or hydrogen. So I'll show you guys the real balloon, how it looks when I open it and on prototype 2.0 we use ttgo lora 32 yeah ttgo lora 32 looks like this and it doesn't have a pme 280 sensor pre-installed we interface it with pme 280 sensor and connect it to a 3.7 depot battery still through jst 2.0 connectors and it is programmed for 868 megahertz and 915 megahertz frequency which is for european and american frequencies so this is how it looks it looks pretty slick and the efficiency of the antenna on the ttg lora board is more efficient than cantina 4610 this one goes for a very long range and still sends packets down to our gateway so this is the 3d printed box which we designed for prototype 0.2 and it looks like this but not really pretty like the 3d printed box we had for prototype 0.1 so i'm just going to fit this into the box and operate it and let you see how i use this for the launch so here it goes it's well fitted inside and Yeah, what you see here sticking out is the BME 280 sensor. BME 280 sensor looks like that. What is sticking out there? And the antenna is that black stuff in front. I'm currently touching the BME 280 sensor right now. And the antenna is over there. So this BME 280 sensor senses the temperature, pressure, and humidity when it is up there in space. When we release the balloon to go up there in space so i'm going to cover that although i can't cover this with one hand it's quite hard to do that because i'm holding my phone with the other hand to film this so that's how it looks and this guy is the ribbon which i used to attach the balloon to the payload and to the parachute through the holes on the body and this is the 12 inches parachute which we used to attach to our payload to bring it down from the sky uh, when the balloon burst up there due to change in pressure so that's how it looks and we attach it using these ropes tied firmly attach it with our payload and allow it to come down when it bursts so that will help it land safely without crashing um, the payload so look at version 0.1 on the white box and version 0.2 on the blue 3d box designed by our team and produced by us managed by us
So this is a clip which I used to clip the balloons when I finish producing hydrogen and that helps me to connect the balloon with the payload. Going over to the prototype 0 0.2, I'm going to switch it on now so that you see how it works. You can see there it's written Telocanda WX Balloon which is the name of our company connected to T, the Tinks Network or TTN. And you can see the elevation day is 1.0. My room temperature is 31.2. Humidity is about 73.5. So you can see that it looks really pretty. The refresh rate on this is 5 seconds. Every 5 seconds, there is a downstream of data coming in from this. The packet are sent over to our gateway, which is outside an outdoor gateway. So as you can see that, it keeps coming in as it is refreshing on ground. We program the refresh rate for 5 uh, seconds and it changes as pressure reduces. So when it goes up there and it changes, pressure reduces. This is our prototype 0 0.3. It looks like this. Pretty slick and beautiful, which will be used for our next launches. It has GPS installed in it. And we currently use this guy, prototype 0 0.2, for now. But we'll soon change over to prototype 0 0.3 and I'm going to do a documentary with prototype 0 0.3 so get ready to watch as I do it with prototype 0 0.3 we'll use this TTGO LoRa which is interfaced with the Neo 6M GPS satellite and is also connected to the Things network which will help us track our balloon to help us tell uh, the longitude and latitude of the location that we are currently at and where our balloon landed so that we can easily track it it gives me all the decimal points that i need to see that so that's what we use to be tracking our balloons so the boat is currently on it's currently sensing current model we use for our launches is prototype 0 0.2 and prototype 0 0.3 will undergo testing soon and we use for our launches where we can easily track it with GPS. What I'm holding now is a Hack Pocket Pro, a conductivity meter for testing the conductivity of the distilled water which we use to produce hydrogen that is being inflated into our balloon. So the next part of the video is going to show you how I do this hydrogen production and the equipment I use to do the hydrogen production. So this is the hydrogen production section where I do the hydrogen production and what is over here with the tubes all over its body is a PM electrolyzer and what I'm holding now is a um, yeah that's the distilled water tank and what I'm holding in my hand is a pocket pro conductivity meter we get supplied with, with distilled water from Epochem Distill, a, a oil servicing company. We buy is distilled water and helium from them. So I'm going to taste the conductivity of the distilled water which is inside the tank right now to see if it is good to go into the PEM electrolyzer to help me do the hydrogen production. So here is the test. Let me take it a, a bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing. Here is the test. The conductivity is at 4.3 microsemians and the temperature is at 30.4 degrees Celsius. That's pretty not good. It shows that they, there are some impurities inside the container which I'm using to test this. And I'm going to pour this out and try it again. It's even 4.4 now. So, doing another test, the conductivity of the water is 4.0. And 4.0 is not too bad to go into our PEM electrolyzer. So I'm going to use this to do the hydrogen production this morning. For the hydrogen production, we use QLC 1000 PEM electrolyzer, which is powered by a 12 VDC 220 ounce battery, very close to me. And I use a 2000 a amps rated cable, jumper cable also actually, to power this electrolyzer. We produce the hydrogen through electrolysis. The tube I'm holding now is a oxygen outlet which comes out with unused distilled water and we can recycle that back into this tank and I control the distilled water coming into the water inputs on the electrolyzer 
throw that and that's the water input over there and on use the steel water comes out with oxygen through the pipe at the top so i'm going to find a way to fix that back into the distilled water tank itself because the water there is pure to go back into the distilled water tank so this pipe which is actually the most important pipe this pipe i'm holding now is a hydrogen outlet this is where the hydrogen comes out from with some ionized water which stays inside this bottle and the gas itself will escape into the balloon so i tie this pretty well and allow the water to settle in here when the production is on you see water keeps on coming into this to settle into the, bo the bottle and the gas will escape into the balloon which is well tied and no room for the gases to escape you know hydrogen is dangerous it's explosive so we have to be very careful when dealing with this it needs a lot of experience and technical know-how to deal with stuff like this so i'm going to start the production this morning and you guys are going to see how i do this uh, i'll power this Q P qlc 1000 with this jumper cables which you are seeing here it's a 2000 amp jumper cable and this is the battery which we use we use only one of these and this battery is recharged by green energy from our solar panels here is also our charge controller which is used to control the charges coming in from the solar panels to charge these batteries and we also use this a battery to power the gateway this is where i live and this is currently like a partial lab that's the inverter and the power which we are using currently the lights in the house is powered by these batteries and we still use the same battery to do the production so you guys get ready to watch me do this production tonight so these are the distilled water and the helium gas which is used as backup in case i produce hydrogen which is not enough to carry up a payload we have helium gas which is inert gases helium gas is inert gas with um hydrogen they can mix together so we can fill that up as backup to give the balloon a nice size and allow it to elevate to very great height so that's the battery over there and this is uh, that's the helium gas that's the distilled water this is uh the distilled water tank now this is connected the positive and negative polarities are well connected and the production is ongoing water outlet which can be recycled is coming into this the hydrogen is filling the balloon right now you can see inside that bottle is some droplets of water before it fills up this balloon the droplets of water can fill up to this level and that's water is very impure so the pressure is pumping this balloon through electrolysis this balloon is going to be filled and we are going to use it to do our launch this morning so I'm going to pause the video and come back when the balloon is filled after 30 to 45 minutes to about one hour or more to see how far we can go with the hydrogen today. So there we go after seven minutes. Um, you can see the size. It's not big enough to carry our payload so we keep filling for about close to one hour to have a bigger size. I'll come back when the balloon is has filled up to a very big size so today is just another launch day and before i do i do the launch today i'm going to i'm going to discuss the solution that this project brings and why we do it you know in africa the weather balloons are not being launched we are actually the first set of people the telekanda weather group are actually the first set of people launching weather balloons here in africa so what we do every morning is fill this up with hydrogen produced by PM electrolysis using the, the electrolyte that which I showed you guys in the video. I uh, will show you guys. And this is our payload. Our payload is contained with, um, this is, the next payload is coming. Our payload is contained with DTG Olara board, which is interfaced with this. This is a BME 280 sensor. And this box is 3D printed by us. And we attach it to the top foot parachute. I'll bring this down when change in pressure makes this balloon to bust up there so we are going to do the launch this morning 
and talking about the solution that this brings when we observe african data and uh, weather data down here because this bme takes a temperature pressure and humidity up there we are able to use this data to we use double inversion mode or skew method to predict for six hours of our rainfall this six hours of our rainfall can help us predict for flash flooding of areas that has vulnerable children in africa because this area is filled with a lot of vulnerable people who can be affected by flood and we also use it to observe the climate change that is occurring in Africa currently. And we also use this data to, to do businesses with um, drone delivery companies where drone pilots can find out how the weather condition will be. You know, weather data taken from ground is more accurate than weather data taken from satellite. This project is supervised by a former NASA engineer and a former Boeing engineer, um, Nicolas Lopez. So he's the one who supervises everything I do in the US and he said we do this launching every day and we use those methods to ready for rainfall. Our data is open source. The data we fetch from this project is open source, stored on Telos blockchain. Um, well, uh, we store it on Telos blockchain and we do the analysis from there. There's also stuff called launch rewards so that each time, each time I launch this there's a reward for launching this. It paid out in digital token called Telos from the Telos blockchain. So this is a project that combines three different kinds of technology, blockchain technology, um, internet, uh, IoT devices, these are internet of things, and AI technology. So our it also combines a lot of skills like 3D printing and more. So we go for the low cost as possible. And sadly, when launching this, we do not have a recovery method. We don't have a way to recover this because our model does not have a um, GPS pre-installed in it, but we have a, a TGGO um, tracker that is interfaced with the VME, that is interfaced with the um, Neo 6M satellites that we can use to track. The next board which is coming up, the next board which is showing on your screen now, it looks, it looks like that. That's GPS installed. This one is branded as Kanda. So the next board is going to have this GPS feature which we can use this to track it and pick up the balloon, reuse the payload. You know, in the US, um, National Space Station or National Weather Station, sorry, um, recovers 20% of their launches. This is actually very hard to recover sometimes because it might land in the location based on the wind direction. Wind direction also affects this. And the amount of gas we fill into this influences the vertical direction. So the LoRa One Gateway, pause the video. So the LoRa One Gateway, which we use for this, is out here. This is a UG87 outdoor gateway, which is used to receive packets from that um, TTGO. It comes downstream to this UG87. It's currently on, and I need to do some verifications on the blockchain to be connected to this, so that we can start receiving our data. So, to do the verifications, we are going to go to our new launch location. The best we are going is going to give us a nice area of coverage. So, I'll do the verification over there. We still have we still receive packets from that side. So, I'll do the verification over there and we'll start receiving packets on the blockchain. So, come with me. Let's go. Now, we are verified for launch. I'm out here in the street. I want to stand here where I can get a very high coverage. Or what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to free the balloons to go in three seconds. And I hope it travels towards my gateway, which is over there, so that we can have more time to receive packets. So in three seconds, I'm going to let this go. Three, two, one. 